Uh, join the your master of ceremonies, Dale K. No, that's too far. Oh, ah, I got an idea. Join the guy who knows things about stuff. This is the generic live show with the guy who knows things about stuff, Dale Campbell. Our turn! Hello everyone, I'm... <laughs> that looks like I was doing something a little bit drunk or what the it is hour two, so we are a little bit later. I mean, it's still, it's still what, 7 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> Way too early to be doing that at 9 in the morning, let me tell you. Thanks for joining us here on the Generic Live Show for a Sunday. It's Dale Campbell here with you. Uh, we're doing a geek I.O. Thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure, as per always. Uh, we're trialing out a new format. Uh, uh, we're trialing out a little bit of a, a little bit of a shake-up on the traditional Generic Live uh, show format that you know and love. Uh, you know, we, it was a it was a post show conversation, and uh, we decided to take it all on board. We've been working shopping uh, things a little bit. Uh, hour one was enjoyable for me. I am not exhausted uh, from doing the se uh, the rigid segments. I could let things go as long as I wanted or as short as I wanted it. I straight up my life, but also uh, it's it's a it's like a it's like a fresh smoothie. The generic live smoothie. I don't know. I'm going to be doing that. That's my whole thing now. It's just making sure that um, that things are all uh, all shaken up. Uh, 1-800-I-D-G-A-F uh, says, I like me a good lemon shake up. Particularly on a Sunday morning. I don't know what this is. Uh, again, I want to send out a massive congratulations to Sandra Kurz who won the hoodie. Uh, the Generic Live Hoodie Giveaway, we finally gave that thing away. Uh, so, Sandra Kurz, uh, you've got a, a an email coming your direction. Generic Live Protein Shake. Exactly. Exactly. We got all the protein that you need. And maybe, uh, maybe a little bit too much protein. Uh, I've given it to me to make a protein joke. Uh... <laughs> So we've got a couple of we got a couple of smaller stories before we head into our, our major story for the day. Uh, uh, first up, a little bit of sad news: Stephen Hawking dies at age seventy-six. Family says Stephen Hawking was dubbed one of the most brilliant theoretical physicists since Albert Einstein. He was given only two years to live when he was diagnosed with motor neuron disease in nineteen sixty-three. Professor Hawking's work ranged from the origins of the universe through the, to the prospect of time travel. Uh, he died peacefully in his uh, home in Cambridge in the early hours of Wednesday morning, local time, according to a statement by his family. Quote, he died peacefully at his home in... Oh, sorry, that is the line above it. Quote, his family kindly requested uh, that he may... Uh, that he be given the time and privacy to mourn his passing, uh, but they would like to thank everyone who has given Professor Hawking's uh, has been a part of. Excuse me, take three, who has been by Professor Hawking's side and supported him throughout his life. The statement said, Professor Hawking, who was dubbed one of the most brilliant th theoretical physicists since Albert Einstein, died on what would have been Einstein's 139th birthday. Professor Hawking's children's Lucy, Robert, Tim said that they were deeply saddened by the father's part by their father's passing. Quote, he was a great scientist and an extraordinary man whose work and legacy will live on for many years. His courage and persistence with his brilliance and humor inspired people across the world, they said. Uh, the University of Cambridge will be opening a book of condolence at the Gondon and Catius College for those willing to pay tribute uh, to his life. That is Hawking and his daughter Lucy. Uh, as well, let's let's reflect on some Stephen Hawking, shall we? Uh, this is Stephen Hawking reflecting on his greatest achievement. I never expected to reach seventy-five, so I feel very fortunate to be able to reflect on my legacy. I think my greatest achievement will be my discovery that black holes are not entirely black. 
quantum effects cause them to glow like hot bodies with a temperature that is lower, the larger the black hole. This result was completely unexpected and showed there is a deep relationship between gravity and thermodynamics. I think this will be key to understanding how paradoxes between quantum mechanics and general relativity can be resolved. Uh, that is Stephen Hawking there reflecting on his great work regarding uh, black holes. Uh, we've also got Stephen Hawking talking about uh, the search uh, for alien life. Probability is low. Probably. With his trademark sense of humor, physicist Stephen Hawking announced plans to search for alien life. But the discoveries of the Kepler mission suggest that there are billions of habitable planets in our galaxy alone. And there are at least a hundred billion galaxies in the visible universe. So it seems likely that there are others out there. They hope to deploy thousands of tiny light-propelled spacecraft into our nearest neighboring star system, called Alpha Centauri, which is 25 trillion miles away. Scientists hope the vehicles, which are called nanocraft, will be able to travel at 20% of the speed of light, which is more than a thousand times faster than current spacecraft. They'll be around the size of a postage stamp with a small sail, but despite their small size, they'll be able to carry cameras and communications equipment. That means they can send back pictures, which will help determine if the star system contains an Earth-like planet capable of sustaining life. But before they do that, the craft would have to go through a difficult journey, first surviving a launch from a larger spacecraft, then 20 years of travel through interstellar space, where there are plenty of obstacles like dust collisions to dodge. It would then take four years for the pictures to transmit back to Earth. The project's called Breakthrough Starshot and could take years to develop, and there's every chance it may not work. The $100 million initiative is being financed by billionaire internet investor Yuri Milner. Last year, he and Hawking announced a 10-year-long project called Breakthrough Listen. This involves monitoring radio signals for signs of intelligent life across the universe. Today, we commit to this next great leap into the cosmos because we are human and our nature is to fly. Uh, that is, yes, yeah, Stephen Hawking announcing the new search uh, for alien life. Now, we've, we've got another clip we didn't actually play in hour one. See, hour two getting the hot exclusive this week. Uh, we've got uh, scientist Adam Spencer reflecting on the life and legacy of Stephen Hawking. People are understandably sad Hawking. and thought that we won't hear from him again, but if, if you're ever going to use the phrase, he had a good innings, Stephen Hawking lived an incredible life, even for someone who wasn't challenged by the strictures of ALS, and given that, uh, it's it's almost mind-numbing to plot exactly how much he achieved. How will his contributions and breakthroughs in the field of science be remembered? If, if, if you're really playing hardball and asking, is he the greatest physicist who ever lived, there's a few others who could throw their hat in that ring. But his work in the 1980s and around that time on the structure of the universe and black holes I mean, is world class and has set up generations of thinkers since. But when you marry that with the work as a popular scientist, I'd say other than Albert Einstein, he would be the most recognised scientific name of all time. And it's a legacy that goes from the elite of academia through to more general science, asking us to think about artificial intelligence and do we need to populate the universe, through to the extremes of like real pop culture cut through. The guy was on The Simpsons. He did his own voice on The Simpsons. He was on, I'm pretty sure there's a joke in an episode of Big Bang Theory where he says, what's the similarity between Sheldon and a black hole? They both suck. <laughs> this is from a guy who was one of the greatest physicists of his generation, oh, okay, and his joke. book, A Brief History of Time, sells millions of copies 30 years ago, and maybe even creates the whole concept of the modern industry of popular science that's a bit difficult to get your head around, but all the better for you to try. And a man who spoke with a voice synthesizer mm. 
gave speaking tours and was uh, it, and you know had gave sold out tours and there's an australian connection i don't know it wasn't the very first but one of the reboots of his speech synthesizer was australian technology that was used for a while there it was back in 1985 that he had the operation and lost his voice Oof. and you really would have thought at that stage this that's going to really have an impact on his life well what is it 33 years since then that he continued to work continue to write continue to inspire he was quite provocative at times as well. Both within his theories. His theories were often at the very cutting edge. He loved placing bets on things. He had a famous bet with an American cosmologist, Kip Thorne, who was part of the whole group that helped us discover gravitational waves. I think he bet Kip Thorne a subscription to Penthouse magazine. This was back <laughs> in the day. And he lost and had to pay it over. He bet someone $1,000 whether they'd ever discover a Higgs boson. He lost that one as well. So he wasn't infallible. He was always happy to put his name behind a challenge to get people thinking. Oh, that is... Uh... The, a, a quick reflection on Stephen Hawking's uh, life. Like I said last hour, really an impressive feat, uh, regardless of whether you are a massive uh, science buff uh, or not. Uh, you know, you still have to appreciate the fact that uh, that this person uh, has lived and achieved as much as they have. Uh, you know, it's definitely. And again, a person who was given two years to live is certainly, certainly impressive and definitely, uh, definitely, uh, definitely deserves the recognition and deserved all the accolades uh, that he got for sure. Uh, let's, let's move on to something, uh, a quick change of pace. Uh, here, uh, as something is loading, I can't get this to load. Uh, all right, so, uh, quick, so you, you think of international places, right? You think internationally people try and take their cuisines a little, a little bit ambitiously to other countries, right? Uh, they, a, a prime example of this. And the example that, that we have here, <laughs> maybe because I'm, I'm lazy and don't really want to come up with another analogy because that worked out for me la well for me last time, didn't it? Coming up with a crappy analogy. Uh, an Australian, Australian cuisine in the United Kingdom. That's, that's the, the, the headline alone. And an assessment of an Australian eatery in London is so scathing he said he would much rather eat a dog, not eat like a dog, eat a dog. Uh, that's a very long link. I just realized that. Oh, well. Uh, and, and it's gone down rather well. Like, Australian cuisine in the UK has, has gone well. I don't know. Are there any Australian eateries in the US of May? I don't know. I don't really remember any... Australian establishments in uh, America. I'm sure they exist. They probably just don't exist uh, where I've been, right? I'm positive that the Australian cuisine exists over in America. Huh. Uh, anyway, coffee shop Flat White uh, opened in the heart of Soho in 2005. It introduced the British to the milky drink, and it's now the ambiguous uh, to the to the motherland. Why is this? Okay, I'm gonna full screen this. I'm not gonna show this on screen. Uh, but an awfully evaluation of another inspired uh, eatery has shown that love for all things Australian has its limit. This cafe name alone sends chills up my spine. It's called Farm Girl. No lie. <laughs> this restaurant's called Farm Girl. And the Guardian's Jay Rayner went there for a feed. And see where this goes. 
And we did not stay for dessert. They cancelled their dessert order, which... By the way, when you ever go to a restaurant and you have to cancel your dessert order... Not ordering desserts, one thing, but if you have to physically cancel an order that you've put in already... Oh boy, you know you've got something going on. The cafe's... Oh, I'm <laughs> not reading that sentence. The cafe's restaurant website states that the quote unquote original farm girl was called Rose. Oh god, which, it's a race to which name's worse, right? And this is coming from a person who has a show called Generic Live Show. Which name's worse, Rose Girl or, or Farm Girl or Rose? <laughs> Uh, her, quote, childhood spent on an Australian farm means she's harder than she looks and appears simple country living, unquote. Oh, boy. The menu isn't so simple, though. It includes delectables such as jackfruit tacos, coconut bacon, actually, it's smoked and seasoned coconut flesh so it's not even bacon don't claim something's bacon when it's not <laughs> yeah exactly move yeah there you go <laughs> but yeah don't claim something's bacon when it's not anyway uh, and kale's salad which can be sprinkled with superfood extras like bee pollen and chlorophyll? Sure. Wash it all down with a turmeric or activated charcoal latte. The f fridge magnet is an activated charcoal latte. I really wanted to swear then. <laughs> what the hell is that? Like what? I don't even know what that is. Like, ugh, okay. Pete Evans would love this place. You know, the paleo would love this place. But I don't know what the hell a turmeric latte is or an activated charcoal latte. I was called that in high school, but I thought that was just an insult. I didn't know if it was an actual food or not. And the menu didn't help. There's a V for vegan. There's a GF for gluten-free. There's a dairy-free. And I think they're missing a few. There should be a taste-free, a joy-free, and an... Awah, A A H Y W E H. Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. He wrote, "Oof." Farm Girl is situated in Chelsea, one of London's posher suburbs. Think like Paddington in both city and Sydney and Brisbane, or to Brook, uh, to Brook in Melbourne. Quote: It fills quickly on a cold winter's evening with blonde tress <laughs> tressed Chelsea women, just. Bubbling with intolerance, he said. Oh, God. <laughs> you can already tell it, it's not going well. Then the food arrived, and every course is more or less a disaster. Man, this review is rough. A, gl a globe anachoke that has been, quote, boiled until it is soft and rank as grandma's cabbage, only with less glamour. Ugh. A bowl of market veggies has carrot hummus. What? It's carrot hummus. What is that? Man, I'm learning a lot about food of late, but cheapest Christ. I don't know what I don't know what an activated charcoal latte is or a carrot hummus. I've heard of pumpkin hummus, which is disgusting, but a carrot hummus? You just puree carrots? Is that how that works? It's water buffalo again. <laughs> Take it up today. Surely you can't go wrong with a schnitzel. Guess again. The meat is overcooked. The texture is something. Uh, a shoe shop might one day think about reusing it. <laughs> Insoles. Jesus Christ. All right. Well. Uh, then the vegetable curry, regarded as an utter shameful <laughs> tapestry um, by many in Southeast Asia, and it's actively unpleasant. The Guardian reviewer wrote. Oof. Man. Man, 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 man. It's just dismissal cooking that pains me. <laughs> it's squandering of ingredients and people's time and the tiresome narrative of wellness, in air quotes, 
which is being vlogged. Wow. Um. Okay. Well. Dishes cost between seventy dollars, seventy and two hundred dollars each. Each. From seventy dollars to two hundred dollars each. Oh, and by the way, if I can show this, this little bit, uh, see if this works. Uh, I want to see if I can get. That's what a charcoal latte looks like. Uh, for those who aren't in the know, it's what a charcoal latte looks like. Just want to leave that on screen for for a moment. I like the pattern. I will give the pattern this. It looks decent enough, right? It definitely, it definitely doesn't look that bad, right? 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 I mean, I don't know. It must taste terrible, but. Oh man, uh, I say this because I went to a restaurant, a, a brilliant restaurant this last this last week uh, after my graduation, a, a, a tapas bar, which I haven't ever been to a tapas place. It, a tapas is tapas tapas I tapas are an interesting concept. I do like that. Uh, they're 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 very interesting concept. Um, oof. Man, I mean, look at this place. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show this on screen. Like, what is, what is that? Like, come on. Like, that, that looks like a discount, discount diner that you would find in a family show that you can't think of the name of. Free <laughs> show bits. Uh, <laughs> that popped gr granola on the side looks more <laughs> delicious than that. Uh, but uh, to describe it for audio listeners, it's literally a a chess board, uh, a, a blue chess board, and what looks like discount furniture uh, and couches that are that your grandmother mother made uh, ninety years ago. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with them, they're comfy, but they're still from 90 years ago. Uh, and you definitely need an upgrade. Ugh. Man. Uh, that was fun. <laughs> uh, oh, this though, this is the... Is this the taco? I think this is the taco, you guys. This is the jackfruit taco. Doesn't that look delicious? Uh, I can't get the whole thing on screen. Ah, oh, there we go. But doesn't that look delicious? You can't even identify what's in there. So how... How does... Okay. You know what? We'll go with yes and... That's a jackfruit... I don't even know what a jackfruit is. Oh, ah, we can ask our friend. Hey, Siri. What's a jackfruit... Jackfruit, also known as jack tree, fen, jackfruit, or sometimes simply jack or jack, is a species of tree in the fig, mulberry, and breadfruit family native to southwest India. Shall uh. I continue? Ah, uh, no, you're good. Okay. Uh, I got literally a blank screen. <laughs> Closed it and the screen went blank. <laughs> Siri knows. Siri knows I'm not even continuing with that. So it's a breadfruit taco. Ugh. All right. Well, uh, each their own. Uh, it's definitely not my cup of tea, but and it's not this guy's cup of tea. But let me know your weird food adventures. I want to know your weird food adventures uh, because there's got to be some out there, right? I, I haven't I haven't had that many bad food experiences. I mean, I've had food that has been a little undercooked, but that's you could fix that. You can't fix this. You can't fix this. 
Ugh. Anyway, as we continue here on the Generic Live Show for a Sunday, it's Dale Campbell here with you. Well, are Australian supermarkets in trouble? As Coles, one of the major Australian supermarkets, spelt properly with a C, faces an uncertain future. Will this impact the landscape of Australian supermarkets forever? We'll find out right after these messages. We'll be right back on the Genetic Live Show. I've been Dale Campbell. Stay tuned. This Geek Hire Podcast Network program is sponsored by Audible. They're the leaders in digital audiobooks on the internet. Choose from over 100,000 titles across all types of literature, including fiction, non-fiction, and periodicals. Try Audible.com now and get your first 30 days of Audible Listener Gold Membership Plan for three. That's right, three, which includes one audiobook credit per month. After your 30-day trial, your membership will renew for just $14.95 per month, so you can continue to receive your audiobook credit per month, plus members-only discounts on all audio purchases. If audiobooks aren't quite your thing, well that's okay. Audible also have a variety of radio and TV programs and audio versions of magazines and newspapers. There's something for everyone. Check out geek-io.net slash audible for all of the details. And we thank Audible for their support of the Geek.io podcast network. Enjoying the show? Want more once we go offline? You can keep the conversation going in the Geek.io Discord over at geek-io.net slash discord. Hang out with all of your favorite Geek.io personalities, and if you support our Patreon at patreon.com slash geek.io, you get exclusive content. Again, keep the conversation alive once we go offline over at geek-io.net slash discord. Are you a fan of the Generic Live Show? Now you can fill your home with the best Generic Live Show products by heading over to Generic Live Home. You can either pick up a Generic Live mug, or a Generic Live shirt, or even a Generic Live pillow, or maybe even all three. Everything at Generic Live Home is at affordable prices. So go check out the full range now over at geek-io.net slash Generic Live Home. And we thank you for your support of the Generic Live Show. Part of a balanced breakfast and proud members of the Geekio Podcast Network. This is the Generic Live Show. Thanks for joining us here on the Generic Live Show for a Sunday. It's Dale Campbell here with you. We're doing it for Geekio. Thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure, as per always, on our fresh, funky, fresh. Hi, nine of twelve. Welcome to the Generic Live Show. Nine of twelve. Welcome. Hi, 9 of 12. Hi, 1-800-9-DGF. Hi, Death by Mage. Hello, everyone else. Lurkers and beyond. Thanks for joining us here on the Drank Live Show. We're getting the beats on. Uh, welcome uh, to a fresh format. I, I'm loving this loving this new format. Uh, it's, it's, it's great, you know. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Alright, I don't know what that was. That was weird. Uh, so... One thing you need to know going into this next segment is that Australian, the Australian supermarkets uh, are a tough beast. And uh, 
Hi, one eight hundred ITGM. Are we gonna do this? Everyone, just type hi in the chat, just over and over and over again. Just that'll be that'll make my day. Uh, that'll make the chat active too. So that that'd be great. Uh, so one thing. Uh, hi, one eight hundred ITGAF. Uh, one thing that. <sighs> trying to get on track. Uh, one thing that you need to know about Australian supermarkets is, it's very. Actually, a lot of Australian businesses are very monopolistic, if that makes sense. They're very uh, centered around the... So there, there are two major players, and of course there's a whole... There's a third player, uh, Metcash, who is a little bit off to the side. They're on the independent side. And there's a whole bunch of like little mom-and-pop sort of grocery stores so you've got your, your big chains you've got your little chains and then you've got your mom and pop shop but the big chains command about 80 percent of the business i want to say and these big box stores are everywhere full disclaimer i work for a big box uh, grocery store and just want to get that out there before we can this because i don't want anyone to think that there's any collusion going on here which I, you would be the first to know if there was, let me tell you. Uh, but one of, one of the major supermarket chains is being dumped. Uh, well, is planned on being dumped uh, by their parent company. So, uh, Wool, uh, Woolworths and Coles, the two major retailers, are owned by parent companies who own a whole bunch of, they're, they're groups, right? They, they have... It's, 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 uh, multi, uh, culturalism? No, that's not the word I was thinking of. Corporatism. There you go. Capitalistic. That's also accurate. Multi-corporalism. That's a new one. That's a new one for the dictionary. Uh, so, uh, coming from the person who couldn't think of the right family show in the pre-show, I think I'm doing well with multi-corporalism. Or well, capitalism is probably a better way. So supermarket giant Coles is being dumped by its parent company in shock move as it leaves an uncertain future without the backing of its enormous uh, corporate parent. Uh, the conglomerate West Farmers, which is Australia's largest company in terms of revenue. Uh, stupid internet. Yes, Chorus and Rhino. And back. All right. And we're back. Uh, yeah, yeah, I went through a brown out. That was, that was fun. And the internet, the internet bombed out. Uh, there you go. All right. And we're back. See, this is what happens. We talk about we talk about multi-capitalism. We talk about major corporations, and then they strike down my internet. I'm gonna I'm gonna get you, young, independent, mildly attractive twenty-something-year-old. We're gonna shut your opinion down. Get off my lawn. I sound like a multinational company. It's my new character corporate guy uh, uh yeah it is kind of pixelated -y and buffery on my end as well uh kind of fixing it <laughs> apparently i look like a fine work of art <laughs> thanks nine of twelve i'll take that i'll take that win i i don't know what to do uh everything's up and running on my end now so i'll see how we go huh see multinational corporations want to shut down this show it's proof it's proof right uh i don't know what to do all right uh we should be up and running all right so and we're back again <laughs> <laughs> Again, I start talking about multinational corporations and they shut down my internet. It works. <laughs> from the two providers that I could have had internet from, the one electrical provider that I couldn't get electricity from, and the one of the two supermarkets that I could shop at. <laughs> Welcome to Australia. Stay a while. It's a great country, I promise. <laughs> so, I don't even know where we were. Coles <laughs> gets dropped. So I don't know, uh, so I don't know where to kind of, where Coles will go from here, if they will downsize or not, because they have a lot of outlets, just in our little town of, 
180,000 people. They have like six supermarkets and and that's a lot of coverage to do from an independent company and I know a lot of those independent companies buy direct from the warehouse. Uh, they don't get pallets and pallets of stock at a time. They only get uh, a certain amount of things all at once. So it's definitely uh, something that is uh, worth considering as well and the marketing as well. And I know, I know particularly Coles uh, on its own definitely has had a few marketing troubles as of late. They've, they've dropped their slogan. They've uh, fixed a lot of the back end kind of stuff to try and go along with this move and then to suddenly get uh, dropped by their parent company after all of those moves is a little bit much. So, uh, quote, West Farmers will measure its success over the next decade based on the returns we generate, not the size of our portfolio, the West Farmers Managing Director Bob Scott said on Friday. While coal still has opportunities to grow, its earning can be expected to grow at a moderate rate. The coal's business, which includes, ah, oh, here you go. <coughs> Excuse me. The coal's business, which includes 800 supermarkets, 900 bottle shops, and 700 convenience stores. I love the fact that there's more liquor outlets than supermarket in the coal's brand. That's just something, something that I'm going to take to heart. Which means for every one Coles out supermarket, there is at least one, uh, 1.25 <laughs> liquor outlets. My, my brand. In 2017, the Coles revenue fell uh, and so did its profits. West Farmers shares rose sharply on the news that it was dumping Coles. So the shares of West Farmers actually went up on the news that they were dumping the Coles brand. Uh, the next, the next part of the headline, the next part of the segment is called Down, Down and Out. Part of Australia's uh, instatable taste for lower prices, the average price of goods sold at Coles, excluding fresh food and tobacco, fell 2.2% in 2017. A lot of pain goes into those price cuts, passed on to its suppliers and profits harder to come by with these price drops. Uh, Coles can't price uh, can't hike prices because if it does, shoppers will go elsewhere. Audi, uh, the popular brand Audi, uh, is continuing to open new stores across the country, whilst Woolworths, the other big box store, is forecasted to be four times as big as Coles in the upcoming yeah, year. Amazon. Uh, is also a key competitor now in Australia, and it with its Amazon. Whoa! I don't know what that was. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Are we being played off? <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> Multinational corporations is going. Nope. <laughs> dun dun. <laughs> that was so good. Okay, I really don't know what that was. I haven't got that much, I haven't got that many uh, tabs open, so I don't know what that was. <laughs> uh, so why doesn't anyone want to buy this business? Hey, does anyone want to buy this? Uh, it's a finicky investment with declining sales and uh, with continuations. <laughs> I'm really thrown off by that was. I'm checking everything twice. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Uh, so, West Farmers doesn't have a buyer, so it's technically not putting coals up for sale. Uh, but keep in mind, if another company does come along and want to buy coals, it definitely will not say no to the deal. Uh, could they want? Uh, they didn't want the cash. Uh, it'd be a big purchase. Surely, someone somewhere would want to buy an Australian supermarket chain. I don't know. It's a risky move. Was that a Discord notification? That wasn't a Discord notification. That's a weird thing that just happened just now. Uh, but I, I, I don't know. Surely there is. Sure. Surely there are people that want to buy. Uh, but that... Oh, Amazon with their, with their food as well. Uh, with the fresh department. 
uh, becoming more of a more of a factor definitely plays into the role as well. I think, I think I can't remember what year it was, but uh, definitely in the upcoming, uh, definitely in the past, there there have been years. I think it was either twenty fourteen or twenty fifteen. Uh, there was definitely definitely a time where there was. There was there was a whole bunch of companies being put up uh, for sale, and I definitely think that we're going through that time now, where people are are being a lot more conservative with their money and with their with their brands, and they want to continue to grow at their their brand and to grow their business but at the same time they don't want to hold on to that dead weight in hopes that it would hopefully make money one day and i think it's it's definitely something worth considering so there you go as we continue here on the jerk live show for a sunday it's dale campbell here excuse me wow ghastly uh, we're gonna go we're gonna round out the show. Round out the show. Apologies, we didn't have time. We'll save this travel article for t for next week because we are going to hang out with the chat room coming up and reflect on hour two of the program as we continue here on the generic live show for a Sunday. It's Dale Campbell here with you. We're doing it for Geekio. We'll see you right after this. Stay tuned. This Geek Audio Podcast Network is proudly sponsored by Think Geek. Think Geek is the biggest online retailer of all things geeky. That's right, everything geeky. And they stock the biggest brands in geekiness like Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who, Minecraft, Legend of Zelda, Marvel, Game of Thrones, DC Comic, and Geek Labs. And they sell a whole bunch of things like collectibles, electronics and gadgets, t-shirts and apparel, gifts. They sell it all over at Think Geek. And they have free shipping on orders over $75 or a flat $6.95 US standard shipping to all places in the US. So when you're ready to check out the range over at Think Geek, the online geek superstore, just use our link to go over to Think Geek over at geek-io.net slash thinkgeek. That gives us a little bit of a kickback on what you buy. Don't worry, we're not stealing your shoe size or asking you for a blood sample. It's okay. We're only getting a kickback from what you buy. We don't actually see what you buy from Think Geek. Join in, geek out, Think Geek. We Thank Think Geek for their support of the Geek IO Podcast Network. The Generic Live Show is proudly powered by you. That's right, you. Patreon.com/geekio is where you can support this show and all of your favorite Geek IO productions. For as little as one dollar a month, you get everything that we do in one nice nifty RSS feed, and you can get a special room in our Discord at geek-io.net slash discord and hang out with all of your favorite geeks. Just head on over to patreon.com slash geekio that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash geekio g-e-e-k-i-o for all the reward levels including a produce your own show level and for all of the details. We thank you for your support. Enjoying the show? Want more once we go offline? You can keep the conversation going in the Geekio Discord over at geek-io.net slash discord. Hang out with all of your favorite Geekio personalities and if you support our Patreon at patreon.com slash geekio, you get exclusive content. Again, keep the conversation alive once we go offline over at geek-io.net slash discord.
Whether we're waking you up or putting you to sleep, this is the Generic Live Show. Thanks for joining us here on the Generic Live Show for a Sunday. It's Daryl Campbell here with you. We're doing it for Geekio. Thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure as per always. Uh, hey there, Red underscore Droid. Good name. That is a good, solid name. Look at you go. Thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure as per always. It's Daryl Campbell here with you. Uh, the new and improved generic live show format. Look at us go. I actually like this format. This is a good, this is chill. This is chill. Apart from, apart from that little hiccup of uh, unintentional fine art in the middle of the hour. I don't know what that was. Uh, I'm still trying to bat them. Baffled. I think it just, the internet just dipped because uh, apparently I can't do anything on this computer for more than two hours at a time. Hi, one eight hundred IDGAF. Hi, I see you. <laughs> I hope I hope MVP's coming up dragging on. It'll be so much fun to to, to, kind of to meet you. Um, yeah, ugh, just spoiled something. Hey, ba da ba ba da ba. Uh, hi, <laughs> how's everyone doing? So, this last hour, uh, we uh, talked about, uh, we didn't do Same as Never Was, the same as you remember, that was last hour, but we do have a, we do have a, I'm going to play this one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new bumper uh, for Same as, uh, same as You Remember, Same As It Ever Was. Listen to this, this is just brilliant. I like this, this is so good. Uh, it's not time for this, but we're playing it anyway. This is not my show! <laughs> or is it? Or is it? I forget. I can't remember. 1974, 1981, 2002, 2001, oh, 1941, <laughs> 704. 704. Is it the same as you remember? Or is it the same as it ever was? Uh, that's our proud of achievement for the day. Uh, by the way, thank, thank you for me for putting that together. That was... That was amazing. Uh, what else? Uh, Stephen Hawking um, tragically passed away at age 76. Died uh, peacefully in his home. Uh, we learnt what a turmeric and charcoal coffee was. <laughs> no, what was it? Activated charcoal coffee. Uh, we learnt what that was. Oh, if you've got any feedback, please do jump in the Discord. Geek-o.net slash Discord. In channel general. Uh, we've got a post show coming up. Well, we're going to do a little bit of a post show uh, here. Uh, jump in channel general. Uh, we've, we've got the voice chat going in there. This is your time to shine. Uh, whilst we reminisce on what we what we talked about this hour. Uh, hey, uh, Coles apparently uh, makes me turn into a fine art exhibition. <laughs> Unintentionally a fine art expedition. Um, and no one wants to buy a dying, uh, a dying supermarket. Turns out, <laughs> turns out, no one, no one wants that in their lives. Uh, in hour one, though, we also, we also in hour one, we we took a trip. Uh, talking, speaking of same as you remember, same as it ever was, we took a trip back to 1999, uh, and learnt that 1999 was indeed the year of the elderly. <laughs> Uh, and we want to wish everyone uh, who uh, who are currently suffering in the New South Wales bushfires, the New South Wales Victorian bushfires, uh, a, a, a safe journey. Uh, it's a tough time. Fires are very, very, uh, you know, they can't, you know, you can't control them. And it definitely is nothing that you can predict of where it's going to go. Up to 80 homes now uh, are, are destroyed, up to 40 five thousand hectares of land uh, are, d are destroyed uh we were going to be talking about what the uh what the what the best positions seats and sleeping tips are on an airplane uh, but we won't get to that instead we're going to talk more about what a a what a activated charcoal coffee is <laughs> what like Okay, I get what charcoal is. I get what the word activated is. But how do you how do you get what an activated charcoal is? Oh, we've got a special guest on the line on our Discord. Uh, cooler, what's your name? Where are you from? 
I just wanted to say hi, Dale. Hi, Vane. How are you? <laughs> hi. I'm trying. I, I'm trying to be somewhat quiet. My girlfriend's asleep. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at you go. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, you enjoyed the show. Well, all except for that little blip where you got pixelated and all funky delic. I, I don't know. I don't know what that was. That was that was weird. That'll that'll always continue to be to be weird. Uh, but yeah, we got we got a quiz coming up as well in the uh, in the after show. Um, you didn't really get much use out of your generic live ad blocker. I'm sorry. So uh, there you go. Uh, all right. Well, we're gonna end the show out on that. Uh, thank you, everyone. For thank you, Mbeam, for being on the chat. I better let you go, otherwise your girlfriend's gonna yell at you for waking her up, and we don't want that. That'll be a real dick button of a move. Uh, on that, uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, you can again support this show and everything we do over at uh, Patreon.com/geekio, Twitch.tv/geekio. Show is where you can watch the show live. Sundays, 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, the only, apparently, the only American time zone that matters, but that's up to a matter of opinion. Uh, because, well, I'm not American, so there is that as well. Uh, what else? What else we got going on? Uh, YouTube.com slash Geekio Show is where you can watch the archives. The whole rock block uh, will be available there. For me, for M Beam, we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye, Dale. Bye, MB. <laughs>